and uh, welcome to the uh, Resonance Science Foundation uh, Unified Science Review. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, looks like we've got a good group uh, assembled here. And uh, I'm excited to share uh, some of the latest discoveries, experiments, and advancements in unified physics and unified science. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, some really important information uh, and experiments uh, to understand uh, that form a foundational understanding uh, for unified physics, um, in particular, understanding the nature of the quantum vacuum. Uh, the ubiquitous energy of space. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, the theory behind uh, quantum vacuum energy or zero point energy, as well as uh, experiments that are directly working with that substantive energetic medium of space. Uh, so it looks like we've got uh, most people uh, joined in. Uh, so we'll get started with the review. So the uh, two key uh, um, experiments that we're going to be looking at today, reviewing today, is uh, vacuum polarization and the quantum energy teleportation protocol. This is harnessing the quantum vacuum energy density and harnessing the intrinsic entanglement of the quantum vacuum, what is actually called literally entanglement harvesting or entanglement farming using the infinite amount of in quantum entanglement of the vacuum state uh, to uh, entangle quantum systems uh, and to even uh, teleport energy between them. So we'll be looking at uh, the some of the theory behind the development and emergence of the idea of the quantum vacuum. Uh, and so, you know, there's this good theoretical development of why it is believed that there should be a constitutive, ever-present energetic fluctuation in all of space. That's understanding the quantum vacuum. But then we'll look at experiments that are demonstrably uh, uh, showing that uh, it's not just theory, that indeed there are uh, constitutive ever-present energetic fluctuations at the zero point level. At what should be the level of zero energy, there is a continual energy flux. Uh, then introduction to the idea of the intrinsic entanglement of that energy density and an experiment uh, recently performed that has demonstrated that intrinsic entanglement of the vacuum energy density and how to leverage that spatial correlation uh, to teleport energy between two quantum systems. And then uh, implications and applications of these idea, ideas. Okay, so uh, experiment uh, recently performed that has produced particles from the quantum vacuum. Uh, this is okay. Uh, so 
Uh, the first experiment that we will review has to do with a process referred to as vacuum polarization described via the Schwinger effect. Uh, this is a vitally important process to understand for the theoretical basis and applied engineering of technologies that can harness the energy of the quantum vacuum. Because one of the key processes in tapping the zero point energy density is generating a gradient, i.e. polarization and the vacuum energy fluctuations. Uh, this is, experiment is a demonstration of how mass energy can be extracted from the vacuum. And so there can no longer be any doubts about the possibility, that is, it's no longer theoretical, that technological engineering can extract mass energy from the vacuum. It is also important to note that we are looking, that uh, what we are looking at in, in this experiment is uh, black hole physics of particle creation. Black hole physics are being mimicked in a tabletop experiment in this case, uh, utilizing graphene. And the experiment is verifying a longstanding prediction of using the electric field to generate particles from the quantum vacuum. That's known as the Schwinger effect. The Schwinger effect uh, is uh, producing particles from the quantum vacuum via vacuum polarization by uh, generating an extremely large electrical field that generates a, a gradient in the vacuum structure. Uh, from a certain perspective, uh, this is what Nassim has been doing for 30 years, reverse engineering black hole physics to describe how we can potentially mimic those dynamics to produce limitless clean energy, gravitational control, and even wormhole travel. Those are all potential technological applications that come from the ability to engineer space-time. One of the ways that you engineer space-time technologically is via vacuum polarization. And we'll see how this has recently been done. So, First, uh, a review of the idea of quantum vacuum fluctuations. Uh, it's really important that we're all on the same page about this idea, uh, because uh, one of the things that I think uh, one of the mistakes that we often make uh, at, at the Resident Science Foundation, uh, our scientists, the research team is assuming uh, that other scientists and even uh, non-technical persons will know about the quantum vacuum fluctuations. And actually, what we've come to find is that this is not necessarily the case. Uh, you know, even uh, uh, physicists, you know, who should ostensibly have a, a very well understanding of quantum vacuum fluctuations seem to uh, not be entirely up to speed on what we're talking about uh, with, with this idea. Uh, so, uh, quantum vacuum fluctuations are also known as uh, the zero point energy density of the vacuum. So there's a, a hypothetical state of space re referred to in physics as the vacuum, the vacuum state. And the idea of the vacuum is a completely empty space devoid of any matter, energy, or forces. Uh, this state is hypothetical because it does not exist anywhere in nature. The reason for this is that the very fabric of the universe, space itself, is a substantive medium, a veritable limitless sea of energy. And this indelible and substantive field is the source energy for all matter and forces in the universe. So there is no such thing as empty space. A true vacuum is a purely hypothetical state. Nothing does not exist. Uh, so in quantum mechanics, you have quanta, which are little discrete wave particle packets. And indeed, when mass energy quanta are discussed, they are often conceptualized and referred to in terms of being particles, even though we should know better. Uh, elementary quanta are still often viewed as like little solid 
billiard ball like punch. 